What's up, y'all? It's Jasmine J. Back with another episode of CC Go, where we spotlight small businesses. And I have the pleasure of having... Oh, Chartiste? Yes, okay. there Chartiste, you go. Yes, I wanted to make sure I say it right. Yeah. So if you could tell us, you know, who you are, what you do, and what, what brings you here today. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Chartiste. As you said, you did very good on that. Um, I'm a health and wellness coach. So um, I would say about three years ago, I developed an online health and wellness platform. And so it's basically an app where I teach women and coach women on the fundamentals of health and wellness from a holistic standpoint. Um, and I started in my fitness journey, the whole ordeal, I would say, in college. And then upon college, I kind of just decided, like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. God willing, it may change over the years as I continue to develop into more of my womanhood. I'm 27. So okay. I don't know. I love what I do. This is my passion. This is my purpose. But I know that there's so many more branches that I can go down towards health and wellness. But for now, I'll say this is a start. So, yeah. So first, let me congratulate you because I think that is a beautiful gift to have and a beautiful thing to do for the community and for yourself. So before you started your own personal fitness Mm -hmm. journey, tell us who you were. What were some things you were into? You know, give us a little Mm -hmm. background about you. Absolutely. So um, as I stated, I'm from Chicago. So when um, I was all grown Growing up, my mom kept me in all the sports and I was in gymnastics, cheer, everything. Wow. Um, and I started teaching. My first, my very first job was a gymnastics coach. And so after that, once I went to college, I had got the opportunity to be an American Reads tutor. So basically I get I got to work in the school systems all around normal Illinois and I got to go in and tutor the kids and basically be like a teacher's assistant. So you've I been loved, teaching for quite a yeah, while. Yeah, I've been teaching for a very long time, but I loved kids. Kids okay. were like my first passion. But I think kind of as I was growing, I kind of was like, okay, like I like education and I like teaching, but I don't think I like being in the realm of the educational standpoint where I'm just teaching the fundamentals of schoolwork, right? But the education stayed with me. So like, I really do enjoy teaching. And um, that's actually how I ended up moving here to Houston. I got hired um, for KIPP and I was working as a kindergarten teacher and they offered me a position from Chicago to here in Houston. And that's how I ended up moving here. Oh, um, wow. so yeah. wait, let's, let's pause right there. Cause my, <laughs> yeah. my children actually went to KIPP for oh, a while. Okay. So what was that experience like with you when you first moved to Houston, you started teaching yeah. at KIPP? What are some of the biggest takeaways mm-hmm. from that experience? Well, I had two two offers. My one, one was either to go to Miami or it was to come to Houston. And I chose, I was like, okay, whichever one I go to and it just feels right, that's that's what I'm going to do. So um, my very first interview was to come here to Houston. And when I came here, it was just like, I felt it. Yeah. The feeling that I really wanted. I'm like, I want to feel like I'm supposed to be here. And so when I came here, I went to the school. I checked out the school. Everything was great. Um, I met some of the principals and the teachers, and I just fell in love with it. And I would say for about three to four months, it was cool. But I'm the type of person, I don't like to be stagnant. Okay. I don't like to do, and I don't like... Routine. I like yeah. the fundamentals of routine, right? Where you have your core values, but I don't like waking up and doing the same exact like thing every single yeah, yeah, like that doesn't work for me. I like to be a free bird. So um everything I knew about teaching had basically got thrown behind the wall because COVID, right? I moved here right when COVID had happened. So oh, COVID wow. hit in March, I moved here in July. So everything that I knew about teaching had been thrown out of the window. I mean, the kids couldn't sit together, couldn't play together. They couldn't. Everything was different. Everything was different, right? And I was like, yeah, I don't think this is for me. Right. Right? And so I was like, I really miss fitness, though, which I started doing that on the side because I needed something to clear my mind from my day to day. So what exactly were you doing on the side while you were teaching? Were you coaching other yeah, people? Yeah, so I had found a gym that actually, they found me before I had even moved to Houston. It was crazy because they had reached out to me and asked me like, hey, we're looking for trainers. Do Because I was hashtagging already. And I was manifesting it. I like I was hashtagging right. like Houston gym, Houston trainer. I didn't know that I was going to come here and really train, but I'm like, let me just put it out it. there. Yeah. And so they had said like, you know, we're looking for trainers. Do you want to train here? You train your clients. I'm like, I don't even live there yet. But I was like, when I come there, I'll check y'all out. I went there, checked them out. I liked them. And I started training clients there. So, you know, in the mornings up until about four o'clock, I was teaching. Then when I would get off, I would go check on my dog, eat a little bit, then head over to the gym. And I would train my clients from about seven to nine, wake up, do the same thing. So yeah, that's what I was doing for a while. And I was like, okay, the teaching thing, not for me no more, but I want to take off with this fitness thing. And I did. So you, oh, I'm just so excited <laughs> about your journey. So you yeah. leave teaching and then you start doing the fitness mm-hmm. coaching. Um, at that 
time about how many clients did you have that you were working with? I was only working with about three women. I could have took on a lot more, but I didn't because in the health and wellness space, you're a lot more than just a coach. Right. I have to be a therapist, a girlfriend, a sister. Like yeah. I have to really like hone in on these women. And at the time, I wasn't in tune with myself. I didn't like what I was doing every day. Yeah. I hated my life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I had to balance being in a job that I didn't want to really do. And then I was battling my passion. And then yeah. on top of that, I was in survival mode. I was in fear because I wasn't trusting that God was going to help me get to where I really wanted to be. I'm like, oh, I'm stuck in this and I have to do this job, this and that. And I, like totally just not in a space of gratitude. Yeah, I was just like waking up doing this because I felt obligated. But I felt like well, I can't just go and do this training stuff. I moved here to be a teacher. So that's what I have to do. Although my steps were already numbered, it didn't mean that I had to stay in that destination. For right? sure, for so sure. So my spiritual, I was spiritually deprived, right? And so I wasn't able to really nurture a lot of women at the time because I had to nurture myself. And it wasn't until I started nurturing myself and feeding myself spiritually and emotionally and physically that I was able to be like, Okay, now I can handle more of the load of the women that I was working with. So at the time, yeah, I was only about three women, but it was I was taking my time with it, right? It wasn't right. really necessarily a need at the time. It was just something I was doing extra. So has it always been women? Like, have you always only trained women? Well, at the beginning when it, when I lived in Chicago, I was also training men as well. But I was uncomfortable training men because... They were just, you know, doing more than they, they were trying to hit on me. And yeah. they, they were just... Making me uncomfortable. Right. And it was, it, I fell out of love with working with men so quickly. And But now, it's like, like, and I don't want to do it. But now I'll train men if I know you personally. So if you a cousin or, you know, I do couples programs now. So if a woman that I know or if a woman reaches out to me and she wants to work with me, but she says, you know, my husband or my boyfriend, blah, 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 I'll take them on as a couple and put them in a couples program. So that's the only way I'll train a man is if he's coming on with his woman. For oh, sure. I yeah. totally understand <laughs> that. So I think something you keep saying, um, which I think is very important, is that you had to like care and love on yourself first mm-hmm. before you can totally touch into your purpose. Mm-hmm. So can you just briefly talk about like what that whole experience was? Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm sure that was a time length yeah. that you were going through that particular journey before mm-hmm. you became the best of yourself. Yeah. So what was that like? Um I would say all growing up, I did grow up in a church. You know, my mom's a minister and my uncle was a pastor. And so I didn't necessarily know what my relationship with God. I don't. I, okay, I didn't have a relationship with God, yeah. right? I just your own. You didn't have the, your yeah, own Yeah, I was just going to church because I was told to and because I had to, and I knew the Bible verses because I kept hearing them and all the different things. However, I didn't have a personal relationship with God. Right. So when I moved to Houston, I was like, you know what? I don't want to feel like if I don't read my daily word or if I don't read my Bible, I'm condemned and God isn't going to bless me. So yeah. I wanted to develop my relationship with God and I wanted to seek out who he was for myself. And that's what I started doing. I started, you know, being more intentional. I started meditating. I started taking more walks in the park and being out in nature and spending time alone. And throughout that process, that really developed so many beautiful things for Mm -hmm. me because I felt in tune with myself. Um, I started going to yoga. I started feeding myself nutrient dense meals because I also suffered in my body for a long time because I was depressed. So, you know, depression, it leads and it strains your body in so many different ways. And so I had to really tune into my body and it helped transform so many things for me, you know, which is how I ended up getting out of the school system and starting a business um, because I started tuning in with myself. so. So some of those things that you learned from that very personal and intimate journey um, are those things that you pour into your clients and to the women that you coach? Definitely. Um, you know, we think that we have it all figured out. And we think <laughs> we that don't. we know we don't. And we think that what we have set out for ourselves is how it's gonna go. All from a sense of control. And I had to realize like we're just actresses in this thing. Our yep. lives are already planned out. The story is already written. Our only job is to wake up and do our best. Yeah. And so I really try to work with my clients and even myself. It's a continued work on release control. Just wake up and do your best. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next week. Just wake up and do your best. And so I think gathering that concept and being able to walk confidently in what I do on a daily basis, it helps me and it helps my clients be able to look at life from a totally different perspective. Man, that's beautiful. All your clients are lucky to have you because you're really in tune. And I think that is so important. You have to be. As a business owner, you have to be. For sure. And you have to be definitely in touch with the purpose Mm -hmm. because... 
like what you're saying right now, you're being very transparent yeah. about your journey. And a lot of people think that just entrepreneurship is just all the beautiful things mm-hmm. that we choose to share. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like you have to be a very strong minded person. Mm-hmm. You have to be patient and you really have to be selfless. Yes. If you want to get to a certain level. So. And it's not about the money. People at think all. entrepreneurship. Girl, <laughs> that's the last thing. That's the last, because it doesn't come until... You're not thinking about it no more. Exactly. It's not about the money. It's about the purpose. And I had to redefine my relationship with money, for one. And then I also had to define what is it that I really want out of this life, right? Because my purpose is healing women and to help women become in tune with their bodies and their minds and their souls like I did for myself. Amen but to that. I also had to realize that like all the materialistic things I thought I wanted, you can have them. What I want, I want a peace of mind. I yep. want a healthy body. I want a roof over my head. I want to go here and there. I don't need the fanciest cars because you know what I don't want? An expensive car note. Right. Like, it's just so many that. material things that I don't want, but a peace of mind. Priceless. So how did you get to the app? Mm-hmm. So actually, um, this leads me into how I quit my job. Okay. So yeah, I, um, it was throughout the holiday season. It was um, Thanksgiving and I have an aunt who lives in Dallas. And so um, she was like, you know, come up here for the holidays. And I was like, no, this is my first, you know, holiday away from my family. Like, I think I'm going to just stay home. And she's like, no, you're not spending the holiday alone. Come up here. So me and my dog, we drove up there. And um, she was telling me she was working with a trainer. And I was thinking to myself, why she ain't working with me? But I'm like, how she going to work with me? Like, I don't have anything to offer her. And so um, she told me about her... um, her coach and how her coach had an app. And I was like, well, let me see it. So I started looking at it. She's like, I'm going to connect y'all with each other. What if, you know, you reach out to her? Maybe she could help you figure out how to develop one of your own. So I reached out to her, literally get on it the next day. I'm like, hey, can can you work with my aunt? Can you teach me and show me how you did this? Or like, who can I go to? She's like, oh, well, I'm actually a business consultant. I teach trainers how to be online trainers. Oh, this wow. is how much it is. Like, if you want to make this fee, whatever, you could do that and we could set you up. Hopped right on that. I literally, whatever I had left in my savings account, it was just enough to cover. Because it was like a, maybe a $1,500 course. She was like, you can make a deposit and then just pay on it. And whatever I had left in my account, I gave it to her. I'm like, let's do it. And she was talking to me, telling me everything. She's like, you got this. Like, you're so educated in this field. Yep. You've been doing it for a while. Like, you know, just quit the job. Like, you don't need the job. And at the time, I'm like, girl, I'm not quitting my job. Like, you know, but then she started putting the talk on me, right? And I was like... Yeah, right. Like, I know that I'm an educator, but I'm not an educator in that realm with teaching kids. But I am an educator for teaching women how to be in tune with their emotional aspects of their minds and their bodies and their souls. And so once I launched that and I put it out to the masses, all my clients from Chicago got on the app and started working with me. Immediately. Immediately. Because they had been waiting for me to have something to work with me, but I had nothing to offer them. So I was like... I don't know what to do with y'all at the time. I just wasn't educated enough on how to develop something for them. So as soon as I put it out there that I had an app and I was doing all the things, all my clients that I was working with in Chicago signed up. Then I started putting using them hashtags, putting it out there for people in Houston, had people signing up. And I was like, oh, I'm good. I can quit this job. I quit. I only had $200 left when I quit my job. But I was like, I'm doing it because... I know that this is what I want to do. This is where my heart lies, my passion lies. And when I was working at the school, I was depressed. I was yeah. I was just, I hated my life. And yeah. I'm like, this is not what God wants me. He can't want this for me. For me, he right. He wants what I want for me. And what I want for me is to walk in purpose. And so I did. And here I am three years later. So, <laughs> Man, this is such an amazing yeah, story. Thank you. So, so as we um, come to the conclusion mm-hmm. of this interview, I have two questions for yeah. you. So one is, we're all about community mm-hmm. um, here at Community Cultivation Network. Mm-hmm. So what do you feel like is the biggest impact on the community with your business and your brand? I would definitely say educating the masses on nutrition, especially women. I think that as women of color, we are so undervalued in um, the realm of health, right? We go to the doctors and something's going on with us. Nobody knows how to diagnose us. Nobody knows what they'll go to giving us medications that make it even that worse. That we don't even need. Some that, exactly, right? And so I feel that what I do is, since I'm coming from a holistic standpoint, I teach women how to eat. I teach you how to heal your body from things that that is already on this earth. You don't have to go get under-the-counter drugs and substances in order to heal your aches and pains. What it starts with is what you're feeding yourself, what you're right. feeding your mind, your body, your soul. And from that, I teach women how to get down into the roots of that. I give you the education. I show you how to do it. I teach you how to do it. And from there, a lot, I work with a lot of women who have endometriosis and PCOS. I heal all that. I do all that. 
Well, you no. are talking to your newest client. I love for it. For sure. I'm definitely about to hook it. up with yes. you after this interview. Yes. So the last question I have, mm-hmm. I'm very, very um, passionate about the youth. Mm-hmm. I, I have three children that are all a part of Generation Z. Mm-hmm. So for the young girl out there who yeah. is depressed or just not happy with their life, but they have a... A passion, or they think they have an idea about something that they want to do. Mm-hmm. What would be your advice to that young girl? I would tell her one: if she doesn't have a big sister, get a big sister. For she sure. don't even have to be your actual, you know, kinfolk. Because I'm the only child, so for me, I didn't necessarily have a lot of mentors and people that I looked up to. I had to go seeking for it, and I found good people along the way. But I would say, go get you somebody and and be open to learning. Whoever yes. you admire, whoever is doing it, how you see it and how you want to do go talk to them. Yep. Start a conversation. It costs nothing to educate yourself. And don't think you know it all because you don't, right? But if you can get underneath that wing and be able to learn and be an open book, that's priceless, right? And get out in nature. I think you hear so many things from God and you see so much when you just take the time to be in solitude. And also, it's okay to have a mind of your own. Just because they doing it, don't mean you have to do it. For sure. Have a mind of your own. Get out in nature. Go seek the guidance and the support that you need. And you don't have to follow a trend. Be the trend. Be I know that's leader. why I said the trend. Yeah. Well, that's a great way to conclude this wonderful interview. Um, anybody that wants to get more information or maybe even join, Absolutely. become one of your clients, how can they reach you? Um, so y'all can text 708 708- 365-9137. And y'all can actually get a discount. Y'all can use CC Network. Just type that into the text. So again, that number is 708-365-9137. And then just write out CC Network in there. And then y'all will get a $50 discount code from me to join my online programming. Well, there you have it, y'all. That concludes another episode of CC Go, where we spotlight small businesses before they make it big. Peace out.